This time in the shop, I'm going to be looking at two of my clamp projects. The first one is the cat twist clamp that I made a year ago. And the other is the rebar clamp that I made around about the same time. All right, first up is the rebar clamp. I made this kind of a spur of the moment thing. Uh, at the time, I think I was, you know, busy with something else. And I just quickly came out and made this because it was something that I was planning to do. And it was a quick project and it was quick to make video too because I didn't do any narration or anything like that. Narration really adds to the length of a video, for me at least. The number one question about this clamp is how much pressure does it exert? And that's the number one question for any homemade clamp that people give, how much pressure does it exert? And typically, any kind of a clamp that you would use for woodworking that I've made would exert more than enough pressure to clamp the parts together adequately. If you're doing metalworking or anything like that, then you might come up a little bit short. But for woodworking, plenty of pressure. The biggest drawback with this clamp is the fact that it's a bit, you know, floppy like this, that it will turn like that easily. Other than that, it works perfectly. Uh, it's quick to set up. The washer on the back of the thing here grips in the ribs on the rebar and that's what locks it in position. The clamp was cheap and quick and easy to build, but I have to be honest when I say that I haven't used it at all in the year since. The fact is that it's a little bit too inconvenient just for that fact right there. If I could make it somehow so that it wouldn't twist, then it would be a great little clamp. It's not too heavy, it's not too bulky, it has a pretty deep reach, and it could be even deeper with a bigger bar. Some other interesting comments in there that I picked out are uh, green rebar is deadly poison, coating should not be inhaled. Well, I don't know where people get these odd ideas. The green on the rebar is epoxy. It's there to stop the bar from rusting. That's what's uh, plagued reinforced concrete since they started making it, especially in areas where there's going to be salt used. The salt will penetrate the concrete and rust the rebar, and that's the reason why you see this green epoxy coating. The epoxy coating is pretty much inert after it sets up, and there is virtually no way to breathe it in unless you're cutting it with a grinder and then the particles are going to be too big to really do you any damage anyway. That's cool and all, but wood won't hold up as good as metal. I'm sure it, if what you're working on isn't heavy duty work, then you could use this, but metal clamps will do better. Well, that's pretty obvious. I mean, obviously all metal clamps will be stronger. Wood is not as strong as metal. But wood is easier to work with, especially for woodworkers. At some point in the future, I'm going to be making all metal clamps, real clamps, I'll call them. But they won't work any differently than the wooden ones that I've made in the past. And they won't really perform any better for clamping up wood. Another comment is, this is good if you have a pillar drill, sanding wheel, vice already. But if you don't have any of that, it's better if you just buy a bar clamp. Well, that's another pretty obvious comment. I mean, these videos that I make are not for people that don't have any tools. They're made for people that already have the tools and either can't afford or just want the challenge of making these things themselves. That's usually the way I do it. When I was growing up, I really couldn't afford very many things. I didn't have access to a lot of stuff, so I would have to make it if I wanted it. Final interesting comment on the rebar clamp is you need to heat the rebar before you bend it. And I didn't do that in the video. And in general terms, you don't have to heat rebar before bending it, especially in this kind of a uh, curve right here. It can easily be bent into that shape. It's done every day out on construction sites. They bend rebar without heating it. And it really doesn't have that much of an effect on the strength of it. Uh, next up is my can twist clamp and I did a follow-up video on this shortly after making it and the same for the rebar clamp but I thought it would be good to check in a year later and see how much I've actually been using these and this is another one that I don't use a lot. It does have an application you know the place that I have used it you can see some glue squeeze out 
is areas where you would have to, you know, clear something to reach in and, you know, clamp it that way. And it's very handy for that. It's nice to have a couple on hand just for those occasions, actually. But for the most part, it stays up on top of my heated cabinet because the small metal clamps that I have are a lot more convenient to use. There were a lot of comments on the video, but most of them were complimentary, saying, you know, what a great idea, what a nice clamp, which I'm very much appreciative of, believe me. But other than that, the number one comment was how I tapped out the dowel, the wooden dowel, for the threaded rod and that maybe it would be stronger if I put in a threaded insert or a nut. Well, the problem with putting anything like that in a three quarter inch dowel is you won't have any dowel left after you put that in. It'll severely weaken the dowel. So you're, you're doing a trade. You're making the threads better, yes, but you're losing structure in the dowel. What I'm going to do at some point is make a set of these from metal but smaller a little bit more compact and I may actually figure out a way to make them quick uh, release so that there would be like a button on the side here so you can you know push the jaw in as far as you go release the the, the button and then you can tighten it up to clamp on the part because that is actually the biggest problem with these how much winding and unwinding you have to do to get it close to where it needs to clamp. I just recently updated the build article on my website for these clamps. Uh, fellow YouTuber Dustin Penner made an SVG file for this clamp so that you can cut out the parts on a CNC machine. And you can find that by following the link that's in the description of this video. Also check out Dustin's channel. He does some interesting projects as well. And there's a link to that in the description. I haven't had a video on this channel for a few days. I've been busy out working on my house. I'm actually working also on the side of my workshop where I've stripped off the old vinyl siding, added some insulation, and I'm putting on fake board and batten as the new siding for the workshop. Once I get through the bulk of that, I'll be doing a bit more work here in the workshop. Also, I've got the Westeros table taken out here again to finish it. I brought it down to my basement with the idea that I would finish sculpting the edge, but I didn't actually do any of it down there. So brought it out here and I'm going to quickly finish sculpting the edge. Then I'll glue it onto the base and build the base from all the swords that I talked about earlier. Final thing is a reminder that there is about a week left in the t-shirt sale. You want to get yours before they're all gone. Now is your opportunity. The money raised goes to a good cause. It helps me keep videos on this channel. It helps me keep living as well, which is a nice thing. If you haven't gotten yours, now is your opportunity. My sincere thanks goes out to all the people that have already bought theirs. Much appreciated. It will really help out here with all my projects. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.